Hello gardening friends and welcome to my farm stand. I'm Julie McDonald and I'm here in Flagstaff, Arizona and I want to show you a really fun thing to do with daffodil bulbs or any bulb for that matter. I just did a video on growing uh, daffodils in your yard, planting them, all the wonderful attributes of daff daffodils so I'm not going to go into that now but what I want to tell you and show you today is how to force daffodils indoors for fun. And I started this um, many years ago, and I, I didn't really do it because I wanted the beauty inside. It was a matter of I found bulbs at, at Walmart or other places that they had discounted greatly, 75% off, and I couldn't resist them. But by that time, there was two feet of snow on the ground, so I couldn't put them in the ground. So I, um, was, I, I learned to force them that way. Now, I'm not going to go into all the crazy things I did because I thought they had to be chilled. You know, daffodils need to be cold. And um, But what I have found out is the grower chills them for you. So you don't have to worry about that. As soon as you get your daffodils or your tulips or any other bulb you want to force, it is ready to go right into your pot inside. So um, I'm going to start with these little beauties. These are called butterfly daffodils. And um, they are just so pretty and very, very hardy. I just love these. Um, they're all butterflies, but they don't bloom exactly at the same time, which in this case is gonna be fine for me. I don't care because I will have one blooming one week and then two more the next week and then three and four weeks later more will bloom and it will kind of extend out over a month. And that's just fine. But I'm gonna put these in here and I like to use a nice deep pot for this because daffodil roots can grow down about 12 inches and I want to give them as much room as possible. So, um, and I'm going to put these in the yard um, in the spring. So, um, and if you don't have a yard, try to find someone to give them to um, rather than discarding them. And if you discard them, don't put that in the comment section, please. That'll cause me great trauma. So. Um, I'm going to put these very close in here, and I'm going to push them just down a little bit. I'm going to give them maybe just a tiny bit of room between them, but I can probably get about 15 bulbs in here. I'm not going to fill the whole thing. Now, they don't need to be very deep. You're going to put them fat side down, bottom side down. You can see their roots here easily. You can tell which way they go. And um, you can put them close and you just put them in here like this. You only have to have them down into the dirt about a third of the bulb. The rest of it can stay on top. I like to have it on top because I like to see them come up. I think it's really fun. If that bothers you, you can plant them down a little bit deeper or you can put moss on top or pebbles or other things. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit. Of course, I will fill this whole thing. I'm gonna add just a little bit more sand here dirt this and this is just garden soil that I pulled out of my garden and I added a, a good amount of sand because bulbs like sand it makes it nice and loose and easy for them to to grow their roots down so I'm going to just kind of spread this like this and I'm going to fill this up and then as whenever I want to get them started I just water them as long as they're dry they're not going to start growing water them they don't like a sunny window surprisingly I have them about 10 feet away in a rather cool room. I, it's, I call it a sunroom. It's got a lot of bright light. But they like to be, um, they like the light. They don't mind cool, but they don't want to be right in that window. So you can put them back a little bit, and that works just great. So these guys are ready to go. Now, I have another thing I'm going to show you here. It's also a nice deep pot. And on this one, I'm going to do what's called layering. This is also really fun, and this is going to make a spectacular display of bulbs. This is going to be amazing. So on this one, I'm going to want to use all bulbs that are going to be the same because I want them all to bloom at the same time. Don't want this one this week and two the next week. So I'm going to use this lovely one called Pink Charm. And this is a very, very pretty one, and these bulbs are all identical. So I'm going to put, and you see that the this pot you move this guy, is a little bit, it's not quite um, filled up to the top, but I'm going to set these bulbs in here like this, and I'm going to put these very, very close because of what I want to, what I'm going for here, the look I'm going for. So I'm going to put about 12 of these here, 
I'm just going to do about half of it. And then I'm going to cover these up until just the tips are showing. So now, that's all you see there are the tips. And then I'm going to come through. Of course, I would do this whole pot. Then I'm going to come through with more bulbs. And in between the tips, I'm going to put another bulb. I'm going to just push it right down in there. So then you're going to have a spectacular display because now you've doubled the amount of bulbs that you have in here. And that's going to be really pretty. I've seen this done. I've done it. It is just gorgeous. A little more stressful for the bulbs because they are uh, so close together, but they will be fine. Um, if you do do this, let me, then you're going to cover this up again, of course, a little bit more. You can even, in a, if you have a big pot, so then I would go up kind of more toward the top. If you have a big pot, you can even triple layer this and have three layers of bulbs. And um, it really is gorgeous to do that. Now, it's a little bit hard to tell you exactly how long it's going to be before your bulbs are, are ready. Um, it depends on uh, the light, amount of light that they're getting. It depends on the heat of the room. But um, generally, when I plant bulbs, or when I, when I did this in the past, January 1st was generally when I was doing it, and I was having a good display of blooms by mid-March. So that will give you at least a little bit of an idea of what, to, of what to plan for. And then when these are finished, after they've bloomed, you can put them, um, you can continue to water them. Oh, and the other thing is they need to be in a saucer. Sorry, I don't have a saucer here. They need to be in a saucer keep them well watered and they don't absorb the water well up from the saucer which other plants do so just keep putting water on them you can't I've never overwatered the daffodils and they do just great so when they're finished blooming and you kind of are done with them they can just go maybe in a in, a, in another place out of the way you can even put them outside until it is ready until you're ready to plant them in your yard um, if you do this maybe the first year because of the stress, they won't bloom, but you will have daffodils. They can live for decades, and you'll have many, many beautiful blooms. So I hope you try forcing. It's great fun for kids, and it's wonderful to have daffodils blooming in the house in the spring. So thanks for watching.